Hi there, Serial Trader here. Let's have a look at the major US indices and now the week is over and of course we'll start off with SPX as usual. And okay, so things are starting to crack here and it looks like we have a good top in and that was on uh, Tuesday at uh, 2738.98. And of course I'll get to the uh, other chart a little later as to why that was such a nice area to top out at. Um, it was the 200 day simple moving average for one. Uh, but here, another thing, so we have this Elliott channel drawn connecting the uh, wave two extreme with the wave four extreme in parallel off of wave three. And that gave us a nice Elliott channel to define this uptrend. And then obviously when you break down out of that channel, it's a good sign that the uptrend has terminated. The five wave move has terminated. And now we're starting a new uh, wave pattern in this case to the downside. I like how we failed right around at that median line. That's a nice signature as well, technically. Uh, okay, now obviously the overall wave count here I've displayed is the uh, exp or running flat scenario. We have wave one down, we have an A, B, C running flat, and now we're starting wave three down. Uh, we also went through some other potential wave counts that are still valid in the last video if you want to look at those. But this is obviously uh, the most bearish interpretation as far as how it all, all fits together. But one thing that's hard to dispute here is that we do have a completed, or certainly looks like a completed five wave advance from the December lows. And now we're starting some sort of decline. Now, whether it's a corrective decline to a higher low or an all out decline to new lows remains to be seen. But from a trading perspective, the direction is certainly now uh, favoring the downside. And I like that we have this little price gap here as well. So that's uh, just the quick overview of where we are with this wave count um, on the daily chart here. And I just want to go in a little more in depth on the shorter term time frame. So this is just a 15 minute chart. And uh, here's our, our top there at 2738.98. Now it counts pretty nicely as a five down. Uh, so we have, you know, you can label this one down, two up, three down, four up, and then wave five. And now we've started some sort of potential uh, wave two up. Maybe we have our A wave in now. Or maybe this is the entirety of the recovery, although judging by how long this decline took, it looks like we need something more proportional. So maybe ABC into wave two, maybe do a fib retracement of this overall decline somewhere around the 618. So uh, don't be surprised to come up here a little bit uh, short term. But looking to set a lower high, obviously, uh, below 2738, and then come down in another five wave, advance, uh, five wave decline, sorry. That would certainly start... Uh, building the case that uh, we're, we're going down in some sort of more significant fashion. I like that we have this price gap here uh, in the third wave. That's typically where you do see price gaps uh, during a third wave. So that's a nice complimentary thing. And yeah, I mean, we had some strength going into the end, end of today, but certainly uh, nothing to discount that we do have a five down and likely a, a good pivot up here. Uh, I did get into a short futures trade earlier in the week uh, after that last video I made and currently my stop on the futures is at the high of the futures and that's 27 uh, it's, it's the same 2738 so that's uh, 0.25 above the actual high in the futures that's where I have my stop and that's on the uh, March contract I believe okay uh, but going back to the SPX chart here. So yeah, I do like that we have a nice uh, clear looking five down on this shorter term time frame. Uh, wouldn't be surprised here if we do get uh, a more complex upward retracement, but certainly looking for it to fail at a lower high and then continue down. Uh, and this could be, you know, the entirety of the bounce, although it doesn't look long enough uh, for that to be the case. So we need to chew up a little bit more time, I would think, for an upward retracement and then down again. So that's kind of the near term picture and so far so good. Okay, now uh, let's go to the thinkorswim candlestick chart. So you can see here on the uh, chart here, we have the 200 day simple moving average. Got right up against that here earlier in the week. Obviously it is acting as resistance uh, and then we failed and, and we started declining. Now, um, I mean, this is, really the definition of a downtrend, right? We have a series of lower highs and lower lows. And even this 
extreme move off the bottom we've had so far has set a lower high below our previous lower high, which was at uh, 2800.18, right? Uh, and this is all occurring below the 200 day moving average. So again, uh, bear with me here. In a uh, bull market, right? In a strong uptrending market, call it what, whatever you want to call it. The 200 day moving average typically acts as a good support level for pullbacks, okay? And uh, you can see that occurred quite a bit between, um, you know, many of these moves during our uptrend. Uh, and now we've kind of turned the tables and we are in a downtrend, still technically speaking, never mind Elliot or anything else. And now you see the 200 day moving average is actually serving up as a pullback level to the upside in a continuing downtrend. So there's nothing bullish about finding resistance at the 200. Uh, you know, that used to be support in the uptrend. Now it's acting as resistance in a downtrend uh, as, it, as it should, essentially. So that is not a, a bullish signal, okay? Now, if we smash through the 200, came back down, had the 50 cross above the 200, for instance, came back down, found support, continued higher. Okay, now we're on to something a lot more bullish, but that's not what we're seeing here. We're seeing the 200-day simple moving average act as resistance at a lower high in a defined downtrend and the 50 day is still well below the 200 day we're still very much in that death cross condition so i just thought i'd point that out uh this is not a place to be jumping in and thinking oh yeah this this thing's just going to new all-time highs in the next uh, month or so that's that's not the signature here okay now that being said We've gone off to a decent start, certainly a gap down there, uh, which did not go filled yet. But that T line, we have not closed below the t daily T line yet. So there's still no real strong signal looking here on the daily candlestick chart that we've broken our uptrend, although I think I made a pretty compelling case for it on the Elliott Wave charts I'd shown uh, previously. But nonetheless, it would be nice to get a close below that T line, get that three T line cross below and start coming down more convincingly to really embrace that uh, we got something something good developing here. Uh, so it's still early is what I'm getting at. Now if we look at the weekly, since we just did close a week there, the weekly has a pretty nice looking reversal candlestick. And if I can just get this dialed in. So this is a weekly doji, potential doji bearish reversal candlestick. And that's where you have that very small real body. So the difference between the opening and the closing of the week very small you had a long upper shadow long lower shadow so just a, a real battle there between bulls and bears very little happened on a closing basis uh opening and closing basis so that's potential reversal candlestick obviously we need confirmation next week to trade lower and i like that we're finding some resistance there at that 50 week simple moving average as we did prior here so that's also nice to see uh okay so that's that's adequate now for SPX. And we'll head on over to uh, the Dow. So on the Dow, let's have a look. On the Dow, we have uh, largely the same action. So we had a doji star reversal on the Dow on Wednesday. Made a slight new high, although did not make a new closing high. Doji star. Confirmation of that doji reversal. Traded down lower on Thursday although not below the T-line. And now again today, trade, traded lower again. Although, on a closing basis, uh, basically flat on the Dow. 0. 0.6, uh, or sorry, 0.25% uh, down. Very small move. But uh, you can see we're basically closed right at the T-line. So the Dow looks maybe a little weaker than the S&P as far as its relationship to the T-line, although still basically just closing right on it here on the daily uh, same message roughly though and oh, you see the oscillator too I'll just point out oscillator obviously we've been in this overbought condition for a while now it looks like we're turning down so that's uh, complementary to further downside and on the weekly on the Dow here similar looking SPX nice reversal candlestick uh, very long upper shadow small real body uh, smaller lower shadow 
So a little bit more of a hammer, although the lower shadow is too big. I'd still call it a doji here. But definitely a weekly reversal candlestick to be looking at. And obviously you need confirmation next week with some more uh, negative trading. All right, so that's the Dow. They're all showing basically the same thing. Uh, we'll go on to the NASDAQ Composite. So on the NASDAQ Composite, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we had our reversal day on the NASDAQ on Wednesday. Made a slight new high, but rejected it. Actually closed lower. Gap down. We have not filled that gap on the NASDAQ. And uh, we went lower today, obviously, intraday, but then closed up some dip buying. And early on in a decline, this is not unusual to see some buying the dip attempts, right? Because this whole time, every time there's a little pullback, they bought the dip and it worked out well. So that's been preconditioned into their behavior, market participants being they. Uh, and it, it'll be, you know, once you're farther along into a decline, that's when you start, uh, you know, getting uh, more bearish closes and, and less dip buying. And uh, basically that, that loss of confidence in the bulls that have been rewarded you know, during that uh, upward move from buying that dip. So that takes a while to uh, smack that out of them. And we're not there yet. So we have not closed below the T-line yet. That's something to be looking for uh, as well on the NASDAQ here. It's certainly off to a decent start. Nice gap down. NASDAQ didn't quite get to its 200-day symbol moving average. And that uh, somewhat reminds me of over here when we also didn't quite get to it. And then uh, you know, just failed nicely from there. Uh, so NASDAQ still in a clearly defined downtrend, still made a lower high on this uh, daily chart, and that was lower than the previous high in December at uh, 74, 74.86.51. Our high came in at uh, 74.10.77. And also uh, on the NASDAQ, so I'll point this out, so the six-way retracement of just the overall move from the uh, all-time high to the December low, we basically just tag that 618 retracement and fail nicely there. So that's also a nice fib level to get a pivot at and so far so good. Uh, now on the weekly chart here, NASDAQ also showing a uh, you know potential re reversal candlestick there. A little bit larger real body, but similar message. Still a doji style candle, very long upper shadow rejecting those higher prices. So a potential weekly reversal candlestick, obviously like the other indices, we need to trade lower next week to confirm this. And certainly the high must hold. Uh, so if you've done any bearish entries here, uh, that is your stop. And that's that's the high here at uh, 74.10.77 on the composite. Okay, and also uh, on the weekly here, nice rejection off this 50-week simple moving average, which had been good resistance in prior upward attempts during this downtrend. So that's a nice uh, technical signature as well. And so far, it's holding nicely. All right. Uh, well, that's that's the NASDAQ there. Now, we'll go over to the VIX, have a peek in on that. And sort of interesting here. So the VIX uh, kind of broke some previous support levels, but not in a significant way. Still basically hugging this 200-day simple moving average. Uh, the current low for VIX comes in at 15 intraday, 1504. Uh, today, we closed at 1572. So VIX uh, definitely seen some some action here, some oscillation. Uh, and if we can still hold these uh, rough areas of support, VIX can get off to its move upwards there if equities can start selling off. Uh, so I'm still holding the February VIX calls. They expire next week. So obviously hoping to unload those on a nice pop-up on VIX here uh, basically right away. But we'll see. They're the 16 strike. So they may or may not work out here. Uh, but ideally, we do get a move up soon in VIX uh, before expiration. And I can uh, cash those out. That'd be great. Uh, and if not, well, they don't always work out, right? Okay, so that's VIX. And, uh, oh yeah, also with my, my SPY uh, options. Still holding the March uh, 260 SPY puts. Didn't add to those, but like I said earlier, I did uh, sell some futures short on ES and with a stop above the high obviously so added some exposure but not in the way of uh, spy options okay now we'll just have a quick peek at the uh, VIX VVIX tool 
and we actually have a sell signal now. So we had the VVIX get above the red moving average quite nicely. And we had SPX confirm by getting below its blue moving average. It's still below that blue moving average, which is currently at 27.14. And VVIX basically come back down uh, just onto the moving average. So we're still on a nice sell signal here with the VIX VVIX tool. And ideally, uh, you know, VIX and VVIX continue trending up and SPX continues trending down. That's the idea. Uh, so definitely early signs, markets starting to crack. There's some sell signals now. It's definitely early, but uh, if you want a good entry, you got to try and be early. And obviously define the risk against the recent highs. Okay, uh, that should be good for now. Check in next week. Serial Trader signing off.